Good morning, everyone. And we are on our second part of the lesson on RA9003 or the Solid Waste Management Act of 2000 or RA9003. Now, I had troubles with my computer. That's why I had to delay the posting of the videos. Now, as we continue, our lesson for today will focus on the solid waste management, um, the comprehensive solid waste management that must be observed in our country. Now, there should be a national solid waste management status report and the agencies that will prepare this would be the DNR, the DOH and other concerned agencies that are mentioned in the law. And the solid waste management status report, the national solid waste um, report should be prepared within six months from the effectivity of the act. Now, the use of the report would be for the formulation of the National Solid Waste Management Framework. Now, the, it includes the inventory of the existing solid waste facilities. It, it is very important because we need to know what to improve, uh, which, weight, uh, uh, which area of solid waste management that really needs to be um, addressed. And among the inclusions would be waste characterization. And this is very important also because we have different types of solid waste depending also on the um, place where it is generated like commercial, industrial, and even residential. We also have the projection of um, waste generation because it varies and um, through time there will be a variance and also the increase of solid waste if not managed. Now, also the quality of surface and groundwater when it comes to contamination with a runoff or the other type of contamination and also the ambient air quality. This is very important because these three things, the, the ground, the air and water are are interrelated and if one is contaminated then there's a uh, chance that um, the other one is also contaminated and one important factor in the solid waste management um, framework would be the population density distribution and population growth this is very important because especially the metropolis we have metro manila and metro cebu which are considered as highly dense area so the solid waste there is also higher compared to the rural areas now the segregation of waste since we have several ways we have several um, um, sources of waste also the law mandates the segregation of waste primarily it should be primarily conducted at source now these are the minimum standards when it comes to segregation of waste uh, there should be a separate container for each type of waste and the container must be properly marked and these could be the classifications the law identify uh, it identifies the classification it could be com compostable non-recyclable recyclable or special waste or other classification if you go to like um, the main roads of your places you can see like like in Cebu we have like uh, recyclable, malata, and deep malata. Now, in hospitals, hospitals also, if you notice, if you go to hospitals, um, the containers are separately marked. E it's even color coded, so that's um, co actually compliant of the law. Now, other requirements for collection and transport of waste. All collectors and other personnel directly dealing with collection of solid waste shall be equipped with a personal protective equipment. This is to ensure protection, but I don't know if there's a place or an LGU that is compliant with this, but the, the usual that I see uh, here um, in our place or in other areas when I travel is that I, I have not seen actually in my lifetime that the collectors are properly equipped. Um, I even see some um, wearing just shorts or even sleeveless um, shirts. So, okay, so much for my observations. Then the collectors must be properly trained to ensure proper um, handling of the waste because um, there could be waste like hospital waste, 
that's very dangerous. Um, it could cause a disease or illness on the collectors. So they must be properly trained. And collection must be done to prevent damage to containers, spillage especially, and or scattering. Because you cannot afford having scattered waste in the highway. That would cost, uh, cost um, so much traffic. And um, the sweeping would cost us um, another um, thousands also. Now, another... Um, requirement for collection and transport would be the separate collection schedules and separate or separate um, trucks or haulers for each specific uh, specific type of waste so um, labeling and collection schedules and um, separate um, haulers or trucks for each type of waste this is very important because um, what's the use of having the um, managing the waste or separating it from the source and when during collection they're not separated or uh, segregated now collection vehicles shall be designed to consider road size you cannot afford having a bi uh, big truck um, collection truck for a very small road so again that would cause um, traffic jam so the condition and capacity again the vehicles must be well maintained because it must be done um, actually uh, it must be done um, smoothly so that it will not cause any inconvenience also on the public and waste compartment must be covered while in transit so it should be covered because um, this is waste and especially the ones that create um, like uh, attractive to the insects so that's very important now Another requirement must be the vehicle must bear a body number, the name and telephone number of the contractor or agency um, doing the collection. And no waste must be stored in the transfer stations beyond 24 hours or it will like if uh, the waste is composed of fruits and vegetables like waste from the public market, then it would even contaminate more. So. Um, being stored in the area now the site of the transfer station shall be considered uh, shall consider also the land use plan of the city or municipality the proximity to collection area so i think it, it's best to uh, it's best to have it near to the the disposal facility and the also the routes uh, again you have to consider um, also the traffic now Thank you for listening to this uh, part of the video lesson and I hope for the next meeting you will look forward to it because we will again focus on recycling and the penalties and incentives as provided in the law. Thank you so much and again I thank those likers and followers of our Facebook page and also our YouTube channel. Um, it's, uh, it has a growing number of subscribers. Please um, also share it, especially on solid waste uh, management and also our website and ongoing and it's a work in progress. Thank you for visiting the site and thank you also for um, sharing, especially. And I actually I met two clients this week that um, they happen to uh, know me because of the YouTube and the website that you found online and someone also shared the Facebook page. Thank you so much and have a happy weekend ahead. Thank you. Thank you.